Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Saga and today we will be taking a look at Nidrasil. Nidrasil is a nature and toxic them which is known for being the core of a stall team or a mid-range team for a lot of reasons and the main reason that it comes down to is that it is essentially a really good tank because of its high defense. It has really high base attack as well which is 88 and well HP is not its strongest trait but you can make it bulky and I recommend you go tanky as well. Now without wasting further time let's jump into the traits for Nidrasil. The first trait we have is Toxic Farewell which is when you get knocked out the attacker loses 10% of max HP and gets poisoned for 3 turns. Now for people who doesn't know poison or what poison actually does it is basically 12.5% damage per turn and that is a flat damage regardless if you're plus 0 defense or plus 5 defenses. So a poison tick on you is basically 12.5% damage per turn. So 3 ticks is basically equal to 37.5% of flat damage. Now the second trait is where it gets a bit tricky and it is really where the Nidrasil shines in which is after attacking with a special technique the target gets poisoned for 3 turns if it's a rival or regenerating for 3 turns if it's an ally or itself. Now what this means is basically if you do a spores for example on your teammate he's gonna heal up for 3 turns and what regenerating means is that 10% per turn so that is 30% HP for your teammate if you do that on them. But if the same spores is used on your opponent then that is basically 3 turns of poison which is 37.5% flat damage. Now I would absolutely under every single situation that you ask me would recommend you go with Triapothecary because Nedrosil has a spread called Allergic Spread and that spread base uh, that move basically is three turns of poison applied on both of the enemy attempts. Uh, it is basically an AOE attack so that is literally 75% of their HP gone just like that without doing anything just in one turn for example let's just say there's a Gialis and Madrid on the other side none of them with the chamomile you put an allergic spread Nitrosil doesn't take 2x damage from them so it's gonna be neutral damage coming from them but the three poison takes are they are both resistant to poison by the way but still both of them will get three poison takes maybe two if they are resistant but still that is literally 50% damage which is 25 on each of them and that is where so much of Nidrasil's value come into picture. Now let's jump onto the moveset for Nidrasil and items. So the first move I would absolutely recommend will be Spores of course. Spores as I said you can use it on your teammate, you can use it on your opponents as well as a low cost so that 3 poison ticks can be applied for only 6 stamina which is really really efficient. The second would be a Toxic Ink that I would recommend. It is a really good Toxic Stab that Nidrasil has and applies Poison for two turns as well. Narcoleptic Hit is the third move that I would recommend because basically it is there to check out on a lot of pesky mentals roaming around here and there and it is really good to use on a Skunch or something. Most people assume that you have a 4x, like you have enough attack to you know one shot a Skunch and they will just wrap it out but that is where you come into picture and you don't play a full attack Nidrasil. You actually played full bulky Nidrasil. But people will assume that you at least put points enough for a scunch one shot knockout you know. But you don't. You just go full bulky. Try to live as much as you can while applying more and more poison ticks and be a menace in the field you know. And the last move but not the least is basically the allergic spread. And allergic spread again. AOE attack 60 damage 18 stamina for 75% flat on the opponent team is just amazing value. Uh, the point at which you can say that Nidrasil got its full value is basically doing one allergic spread on your opponent team and doing maybe one spores or any other attack that it gets off or any other attack it absorbs is basically full value for Nidrasil and you can't get more out of it to be honest. It is just so good but I have seen Nidrasil with my spread living like five six turns and just doing damage after damage doing stuff and still being alive because people think he's not doing much but those toxic ticks over time do damage a lot. Now coming to items I would recommend you guys to have energy drink for sure. A substitution item that I would recommend would be a pillow um, if you would like to sleep after the narcoleptic hit and get some HP back. But most of the time this is a tempo loss and you do not want that so I would recommend you just go with the energy drink and that is a good thing to do. 
Now let's jump on to the TV spread threats analyze for Nidrasil. All right, coming to Nidrasil spread. If you're a new player or, or someone who's just looking to try out Nidrasil, uh, the first spread that I would recommend would be a full tanky Nidrasil. You can play it out this way first, and then if it doesn't work out for you or you need some experimenting, then I would recommend that you can put some points in attack by removing the points in defense and going for you know one shotting a scunch kind of attack which is somewhere around 150 200 as well but as for this guide itself i would recommend a spread of 496 hp 55 stamina 3 speed 2 attack 147 defense and 296 special defense so with this build along with energy drink or i mean the items don't matter because they are not helping in the tankiness or something but with this spread, you are basically living a Banshee Tornado, which is with the Air Specialist and Hand Fan just fine. And I think above 20% HP, if I'm not wrong. And with 55 points in stamina, you will be able to do almost 4 Toxic Inks without overexerting. You can do a Toxic Ink and Logic Spread, Toxic Ink, Spore, Spore. So almost at least 4 tones of uh, Nid staying on board is possible with this spread but you never really want to put Nidrasil on board for such a long time unless there is no counter on the other side. Usually what Nidrasil does is it basically comes in does an allergic spread because the holes are off and then backs out and then comes back in on a swap that's the best use of Nidrasil but there are situations where you will be facing toxic against you know Nidrasil that's when you just keep him in there if you want to because it's it's not gonna take much damage. Uh, coming to allies, Surneef, Mashuk, Kinu are really good allies as I can say because they can revitalize the Nidrasil up. Nidrasil is known for buffing his own allies up and healing them up as well but having a Surneef who can revitalize uh, Nidrasil as well or a Kinu is just so good. Having a Mashuk Ukama is also good for Nidrasil because it gives the synergy for Uroshil and water cannons as well. Uh, going on to the threats, you need to be very careful of all the fire times out there because with this spread we have defense that is less and special defense is high. So stay careful of all of the physical attackers on fire like Mastion. Uh, Raikin can also be one if it is the Quetzalino one. So be careful with that. Tulkan, Scarawat, Hegin, Farkoish don't do much damage but still... You just need to stay away from fires as long as possible with Nidrasil because you don't want to deal with them at all under any situation. Uh, that would be my take on Nidrasil guys. If you guys like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification button if you want to be notified of new uploads. Links to the full playlist and my Twitch if you want to hang out with me is in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord or ping me up. I'll be more than happy to help. I will catch you guys in the next video. Stay safe and take care.